So for anyone that missed what just happened, that was literally a car driving up the river. <laughs> um, I put a video on YouTube this week and one of the comments asked if I could do a bit of a walkthrough of the boat. And then I kind of stewed on it a little bit and I thought, you know, wow, I've done videos on, you know, the build, the trailer build, cost, all that kind of stuff. I've made a fair few videos, but I've never actually made a video where I kind of went through the boat and showed the final product, I suppose. So today, today we are going to hook straight into it. So welcome aboard, guys. This is the boat tour of Revenge. So we'll start on the transom there, and as you can see, we're running the zip wakes. The zip wakes are absolutely awesome. Um, they're tops. It doesn't matter whether, you know, even by myself, I'll still use them. Um, the boat does lean into the wind as, as all boats do. And then zip, zip wakes just do an awesome job at just keeping the boat nice and flat and trimmed perfectly. They're an awesome bit of gear, eh? Um, they're matched with the two underwater lights, so they're colour changed lights. Absolutely, as I've said in a few videos, a luxury, but one of those things that I find pretty cool. And obviously the bungs, they're just the welding um, weld bung with the plastic tap in it, so pretty straightforward stuff there. On the left-hand side of the boat, as you can see the rollers, so the rollers are used to pull fish under the boat, sharks or marlin or or whatever it is. Um, they're a necessity on any of these kind of boats for the kind of fishing that we do. Jumping inside the boat, we'll hook straight into in here um, and plenty of storage. So this storage locker down here in this hatch, it's basically just, um, it's basically just things I wanna get to easily. Doesn't matter if they get wet, you know, there's nothing important in there. I'll just put things in here like, you know, me keeping it um for the bait and stuff like that pretty straightforward nothing too much going on in there on this side is the live bait tank so it's actually full of water at the moment i have got some liveies in there um so with this live bait tank there's two pumps hooked to it so there's a 600 gallon an hour pump and a 1600 gallon an hour pump the 600 gallon an hour pump the idea of that is i can leave it running all night when i'm in the harbor and having a sleep on the boat and dewy fishing and it it provides a perfect amount of water to keep you know yakas and stuff like that over over overnight but it doesn't sound like there's a waterfall in the boat and it doesn't drain much battery the 1600 gallon which is plumbed to the same tank the intent of that one is you know, on the shelf, slimies, big baits that you want to keep lots of water up to and keep them fresh. Throw that big pump on, we can throw both on if I want to, but it kind of gives you that versatility to, you know, be pretty, um, pretty ready to respond no matter what situation you're in. So digging into these hatches down here, on this left hand side, this is our battery bank. So I have two house batteries, a start battery, the controller for the zip wakes is in here, and so is the isolator and all the associated stuff for that. So coming onto this left hand side hatch, this one's pretty boring. It houses our two pumps. So it has a salt water deck wash pump and the hose for that's in this gunnel here and a fresh water deck wash pump and that's the hose there. There's 80 litres of fresh water underneath the deck. Apart from that, this is more like wet storage. So I'll throw things in here that I don't mind getting wet there's not usually ever any water in there, but that's kind of me go-to. So any like the sea anchor and that kind of stuff that usually lives in there. So the next thing that we'll go through is just the side pockets. So you can see from the inside of the transom here to the actual back of the cab is three meters. So there is so much gunnel space. It is just crazy, which is exactly what I wanted when I set out to build this boat. There isn't heaps in the gunnel on the left-hand side, as you can see, and the reason for that is that's where our flying gaffs and that kind of stuff go on this left-hand side. So this left-hand side's always kind of left empty, I suppose, by default. There is a plastic tray in there with some sinkers. This story is the same. Down the back here, we've just got, you know, fixed head gaffs, and in the front two pockets, sinkers, hand cleaner, just that kind of stuff. Pretty straightforward. Um, set up in the pockets but just so much room it's absolutely awesome okay. so that kind of sums it up for the transom 
as for the flooring so the raptor liner that i've talked about before it's still down it's still wearing really really well to be honest it's filthy at the moment so don't let the um video you know taint you too much on it it is usually a fair bit brighter but um i've done a couple of trips and haven't really cleaned the floor very well so this is kind of what it looks like when you just roughly hose it out um, from there there's two storage hatches there's this really big one down the back so this hatch is huge at the moment it's just full of bottles and stuff they're all me shark fishing um, floats that i use and then there's the front hatch that front hatch is like say wet storage sinker wet gaff ropes wet ropes any of that kind of stuff but that's kind of the two hatches and I guess the big take out of it is just floor room. So as you can see, the deck is huge. There's miles of room. It's, it's a, yeah, you could set a swing set up on here. <laughs> so then we make our way straight to the front of the boat to essentially where all the driving happens. And anyway, the Suzuki control gauge there next to the Furuno autopilot. Um, both awesome bits of gear. This gives you fuel usage and all that stuff like any normal computer or any decent outboard would. And obviously autopilot speaks for itself. The two sounder units, so two Furuno Navnet VX2s. So granted they are a, a fairly older unit now. They're certainly um, getting a bit long in the tooth, but they are absolutely awesome. And I swear by them, um, 100% there is definitely better units on the market these days like there's no question at all about that but you know building the boat and with all the costs associated with it this just worked out to be the best option for me I suppose at the time and looking back on it now I certainly don't regret it they've turned out to be an awesome unit I haven't had any troubles at all in you know two years of really putting this boat through its paces and everything's still, you know, working really, really well. So, stoked with them. Um, the switch panel down here, so we got a custom switch panel made for all of the electronics on the boat. Just tidy, looks like it's meant to be there. You don't have, you know, an array of just different random switches. Definitely worth the money if you're, you know, you're going all out and building a boat from scratch. The zip weight controller, as you can see here, um, I've raved about these things heaps of times. Zip wakes are absolutely awesome. And then the controller for the anchor. It's basically all of the setup there. As you can see, there's heaps of room. It's super comfortable to drive. Um, I personally don't like seats. I'd prefer a boat without seats. I don't mind standing up, you know, I find this really comfortable. Plus the gunnels are super wide, you know, there's heaps of room to sit on the gunnels or anything like that or even on the floor in the corner just i find you can still be super comfortable without the added room and whatnot of a seat each to their own but um i certainly prefer this layout for me so the other spot we just need to have a bit of a look at obviously in the front around where the bunk is kind of where i sleep um and I'd, I'd also like to just quickly run through the electronics behind the dash because as anyone that's ever done wiring on a boat could appreciate there is so much work that goes into this stuff it is crazy so we'll just real quickly run through um the rest of the electronics and then have a quick look in the front of the boat so obviously on the roof there's the two vhfs there's also a fusion stereo um with four speakers when we jump into the bunk at the front, you'll see that's all wired through a four channel amp. So it gets pretty good music, eh? Um, it sounds really good. Obviously lights on the back of the cab and all that kind of stuff as you'd, you know, as you'd expect with any of this kind of thing. Radar on the roof that hooks to the Furuno units. Pretty good, eh? Pretty good for an older radar. Um, picks up, you know, 99% of things I'd expect it to. So pretty happy with that. So you can see here guys, look, there's no system to this, but side pockets there, safety gear and a heap of cooking stuff. Um, both sides are essentially the same. Harness, red solo cups, <laughs> just cooking stuff, some sunscreen that I should have used this weekend. We'll just quickly run into behind the dash. So 
We'll start with the um, heading sensor down there. So Furuno head, heading sensor, just a little 12 volt oven. Uh, sounder module, AIS module, and the radar module. So they're the three Furuno units there. Four channel Ross, Rockford Fosgate amp, inverter. Uh, that big unit there is the steering pump. So I've got electric steering in the boat, so it makes it you know, super light to steer and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty awesome. Up the top here, all the, just the network stuff to get the sounders to talk to each other. And you can see both the units there all wired up. Over here, you've got the anchor winch solenoid and fuse. And there's also a C-Tech charger that runs down to that 12 volt plug there. Sorry, 240 volt plug there. So you can run 240 volt power um to charge the batteries if you're on a marina or whatever but you can see there all the fuse panels all the wiring there's a fair bit going on in here eh? otherwise guys as you can see that's pretty much the the inside area the bunk area so heaps of room to sleep in it's pretty good so from there we'll just quickly run around the outside of the boat so Outriggers, you can see that I've got the Kraken bases with the six and a half meter precision poles. Aerials on the roof, radar on the roof. You know, the rest of it, guys, pretty straightforward. Eh? There's not really much more to go through. I do have a Lumar, um, I think it's Profish anchor winch. It's in Whitworth, so it's been in there for ages. I've been pretty slack chasing them up. I, I need to take a bit of the credit for that. But there is an anchor winch that will go back on the front as soon as I get it sorted back out from Whitworth's. And apart from that, guys, this is basically the boat. So, guys, thanks heaps for joining me aboard today. Um, I'm going to jump in the water now and go for a swim. It is super hot here and I am incredibly sunburnt. So, I wanted to get this video finished now that it's done. It's time to pull up on the bank into this sandy beach here, jump in the water and go for a swim for an hour or two. See if I can cool down a little bit. Thanks heaps for joining me on today's video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you. Cheers.